made him. <laughs> one more on Caden's thing, one ton of ammo. I got you! Providing covering fire! One of the oldest of the workhorse battle mechs, the Dervish is a common sight on both the front lines of the inner sphere and the backwaters of the periphery. Oftentimes described as a poor man's archer, the Dervish fulfills its role as a fire support mech adequately enough, though anyone looking for a truly robust and reliable mech may wish for something newer and optimistically with less dry rot. The word Dervish itself makes reference to the ancient Terran religion of Islam. In this ancient religion, a person who dedicates their existence to a particularly austere lifestyle recites chants and induces in themselves trance-like states through which they claim to see the divine. One of the more enduring practices, typically done in groups, was that of dancing in a spinning motion, becoming whirling dervishes. It is unclear whether the dervish was named for the dizzying frenzy of its mixed loadout compared to the dance, or the austerity of the dervish practitioners given its ammunition-dependent loadout. The dervish was first officially produced in 2520, making it one of the oldest battle mechs still commonly seen on the modern battlefield, and the last to be officially made for the forces of the Star League. Many individual mechs are almost 500 years old, and incredibly decrepit from so many years of dry rot and near-constant use. Though the mechs are very old, they were also produced in great numbers, meaning that while individual parts may be unreliable, they are far easier to replace than the parts of most other battle mechs. There is evidence to suggest that dangerous maneuvers such as the infamous Death from Above, in which a battle mech uses their jump jets to propel themselves into the air before literally smashing down onto an opponent, are more commonly performed with dervishes, as even when the mech cripples itself from such an attack, they can be repaired quickly and easily. Despite this curiosity with the DFA maneuver, it's believed that standard melee attacks that involve the mech's arms are actually performed more infrequently with dervishes, as the arms usually contain the only ammunition-independent weapons, and the risk of disarming oneself with such an attack is considered unwise by most veteran pilots. Personally, I'm not sure I agree with these combat philosophies, as I think I'd rather be able to run away than keep a meager laser or two to defend my disabled mech. Speaking of the dervish's arms, due to its distinctive humanoid shape, yet lack of hands, manipulating clamps, or other analogous features, inexperienced or inattentive commanders have been known to order their dervishes into roles they quite literally cannot handle. This generally results in mild embarrassment for the commander, but even this has been documented to cause serious problems in the heat of combat, resulting in injuries, fatalities, and worst of all, expensive repair bills. As they say, knowledge is power, and information is ammunition. At least I think they say that. I'm sure someone said that at some point. I don't know, I'm just a gen- I'm just a technician. A mech technician. Certified. Trust me. Would I lie to you? Again? On to the technical specifications. Weighing in at 55 tons, the DV-6M Dervish is categorized as a medium mech, just shy of the heavyweight class. A stock class 275 engine gives the battle mech a top speed of just over 85 kilometers per hour, making it slightly faster than most inner sphere designs. For comparison, the Centurion, another workhorse mech in the same weight class, is only capable of reaching 64 kilometers per hour, in its stock variation. The Dervish is slightly slower than your average clan design of the same weight class, with the medium class Stormcrow capable of reaching speeds of just under 100 kilometers per hour. 
While this may seem somewhat average, a quintet of jump jets augments the mech's maneuverability just enough for the dervish to really stand out as an excellent addition to any lance. The stock and most common loadout for this mech is a mix of medium lasers and missiles for various ranges of engagement. Specifically, the DV-6M is equipped with a pair of medium lasers, a pair of 10-tube long-range missile launchers, and a pair of 2-tube short-range missile launchers. This stock loadout will set the buyer back about 5 million C-bills, assuming the mech is relatively intact at time of purchase. The Dervish 7D builds upon the standard Succession Wars era 6M's design by completely replacing its endoskeleton with endosteel and its standard armor with a ferrofibrous variation. This frees up a significant amount of weight, which is spent by upgrading the SRM-2s to streak SRM-2s, which have vastly superior tracking. They also added cellular ammunition storage equipment to prevent catastrophic ammunition detonation, as well as double heat sinks, which are self-explanatory. The Dervis 7P replaces all of the standard variations weapons with paired MRM-20s, paired MRM-10s, and a quartet of medium lasers. This variant is very heat inefficient and really only excels at mid-range. An extra light engine and endosteel makes this possible, though also makes the mech more vulnerable to engine damage due to its larger size. A third, perhaps rarest of the variations, is the Archaic 1S, which was all around a worse version of the final production model. The 1S was 22 km per hour slower than the 6M, had a more limited jump range, and possessed no energy weapons, rendering its longevity quite limited. If you ever see one of these, it will either be in a museum or in a scrap pile. If you ever offered the chance to pilot one of these incredibly decrepit 1S's, I highly encourage you to decline that offer and retire from the profession of mech piloting and become something more dignified, like a greeter at a grocery store, or if you're really ambitious, a toll booth operator. <sighs> That's my dream job. Mm. Well, that just about covers it for the broad details of the Dervish. It's old, not terribly competent, smells bad, is generally ill-groomed, and keeps making stupid videos where he pretends to be a mech technician instead of a Jenna. Hey, wait. Who the hell wrote this?